Hello and welcome to allphotobuzz.com. My name is Connor Wahlberg and today I'm going to show you how to create an HDR from one single image using Nick Software's HDRFX Pro. If you don't own the program, head over to www.niksoftware.com and download a free 15-day trial. What we're first going to need to do is create two virtual copies of the image. So right-click on the image you want to convert and click Create Virtual Copy. Then right-click on the original image again and click it one more time. Now we have copy one and copy two. What we need to do is underexpose one and overexpose the other to create a faux HDR. I drop this one by 0.5 and I'm going to raise this one by a half a stop. Now you can see we have the original overexposed by a half and the underexposed by a half image. Press shift and select all three. Go export, right click, go export, HDR Effects Pro. Right now it's generating three TIFF files from the original RAW files. You'll want to use RAW files for this. Now it brings up an exposure menu since we created three different exposures from the same image. It automatically puts the most underexposed one at the top, the most overexposed one at the bottom. Since we underexposed by a half stop, we need to set that. Since this one's overexposed by a half spot, we need to set that then press OK. Right now it's aligning the images so that there's no overlapping and the edges all look straightened and even. That's in case the camera had shaken or something but since we're using the same image that's not going to be an issue at all. Now it's generating presets. These, this is where Nick software really shines. The different presets allow you to see a ton of different HDR effects right away with quick clicks and it automatically shows the effect. There's no waiting around for them to be generated. I'm gonna go with realistic subtle for this image because that looks best to me. But if I wanna go for kind of a legendary look, the monochrome contrasty look is really good on this image. As you can see, it kinda of makes him look almost heroic. We're gonna go with realistic subtle though and just kinda of keep it more realistic and in color. Tone compression controls the effect of the HDR. If you go less, it's not going to be as strong. If you go more, it's really trying to blend all three images and kind of creates a funky look, which can work in some cases. I'm going to go about negative 60%. This keeps the snow still pretty smooth looking, but also shows a lot of detail in it, and the colors don't start getting funky. I'm also going to bring the exposure up just a little bit because I like that snow to be really white. Bring up just a little more saturation. Lower the structure because the edges are a little strong. I'm going to brighten up the blacks because there's no need for them to be that dark. And I'm going to brighten up the whites just a little bit. The snow should be pure white. I'm also going to warm up the image because it's okay if the snow gets a little yellowish tint. It just makes the image look more inviting. Then I'm going to choose the HDR method. These are the real effects for the image. There's natural, clean, crisp, and so on. There's a ton of different effects. I kind of like natural or clean, so I'm going to stick with those for this image. See, if I go full, the effect is way too strong. I'm going to set this image at about 24%. That looks good. Then we can do our selective adjustments. I'm going to click Add Control Point and click in the sky going to enlarge it because the sky's gotten a little bit too bright with the other adjustments I've made. I'm now going to drop the sky down to minus 0.4 exposure value. I'm going to duplicate this point because as you can see this circle's not covering the whole sky. So I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to shrink it down a bit. Now the whole sky seems pretty even. I'm also going to add one little control point just on his face to brighten it up a little. It seems a little dark and it actually seems a little oversaturated so I'm going to lower the saturation a tiny bit on his face. There we go, we have the selective points added. Now we can choose to add a vignette. I kind of think a black frame would look good on this image. And it gives it some strong defined edges. The only thing I don't like is it really adds a lot to this shadow in this area. So let's not add a vignette for this one. We can also adjust levels and adjust our curves. It has some presets, 
and it has a full curve slider down here. I like how it looks right now, so I'm going to go ahead and save the image. Now it's going to automatically save the image and re-import it into Lightroom. One of the things I love about this program is that it really does work pretty fast. I'm working on a fast computer, so that helps, but I think even if I was on a slow computer, this is a fast program. Here's the original image, and here's the edit. You can see how much more detail was brought out from that image. It's pretty incredible. Plus, I didn't have to open Photoshop to render the HDR and make it look correct. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you and you enjoy using the software. Thanks for listening.